This uh, first young lady, she's from Nashville, Tennessee. She's been doing comedy for a little less than a year, but there, she's already making some waves up there. Very funny. Please welcome to the stage for a few minutes, Miss Tracy Barkley. Come on up, Tracy. Hey. Give it up for Jackson. Woo. How about how about those how about those balls, y'all? What about that shit? There's some people in Athens on suicide watch right now. Holy shit. You know, I grew up in a very small town in northeast Alabama, foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Football, very important there, of course. And believe me, the people that you're thinking grew up in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, by God, they they did. (laughs) But it was a town population 1,200. And it it was so small that they actually had a sign that said, Welcome to Historical Collinsville, Alabama because no one really knew what happened there. They had to tell you it was historical. (laughs) Y'all have got a few of those towns around here, I'm sure. You know, as a kid, I always imagined how great it would be if somebody really famous was from my hometown. So I would imagine somebody like Magellan might have been from a very small town. You know, if Magellan was a redneck, he would be out out on the boat, somebody walk up to him and say, Hey, you know the world's flat. If you take that boat out too far, you might fall off the edge of it. That's horse shit. Hold my natural light. Unhook the inner tube from the outboard. I'm going to show you that you can circle the world. (laughs) But anyway, one thing that my town did have going for it was something we called Turkey Trot. It was a festival and street dance around Thanksgiving. And the highlight of which, until PETA shut this part down in the early 90s, was that people would scale to the top of a 10-story clock tower and throw live turkeys down at the crowd. (laughs) These poor turkeys are incapable of flight, yet they were flung. It could only be described as a redneck mosh pit. (laughs) And as a kid, I was horrified. And I'm actually a vegan now. I love animals. There are fat vegans. Get those looks off your faces. Not all vegans are are skinny, you know. Peanut butter, red wine, um, Oreos, all vegan foods. They have done this body good, I'm telling you. But my dad would always try to make me feel better. He would say, well, honey, you know they can glide. Well, the Army taught me to tuck and roll if I fell from a great distance. It doesn't mean that it's optimal for the survival of the person falling. But anyway, another thing that my town had a lot of was churches, one on every corner. And as a kid, religion was always very confusing to me. So I tried, I tried to understand how one God could have so many different ways to, to get to him. So I kind of grouped them together like you would kids in, in high school. For example, you had the jocks. Those were your Baptists, your Methodists, your Catholics, your Episcopals. If you wanted to make it home in time for the Sunday game, that's where you were. That's where you went. <laughs> then you had your, you know, your Scientologists and your Jehovah's Witnesses. Those were like the goth and the emu kids. No one really knows the difference, and no one gives a damn either. <laughs> and then you had what I was raised, Pentecostal. We were like the kids that ate paste in school. <laughs> really fun to watch. No one wants to participate. But really, really high hair. Really, really long skirt. You walk into a Pentecostal church, it's like you've walked into Gary Larson's far side. <laughs> but I assimilated pretty well. You know, the speaking in tongues and things like that. I would, you know, say the Lord's Prayer in pig Latin, and I'd usually get by. <laughs> but I did get asked to leave the church at the age of 17. Why? Because I got in a fight with the preacher's wife. Nothing, nothing really unusual, but she came up to me doing this shit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. After the third punch, I got a little upset. So I started bobbing and weaving, kind of building up some uh, static electricity, and I just popped her one. She went down, and I said, how do you like it? That's science. Blinded that bitch with science. My mother grabbed me by the head, had, had a, drug me out of there. Now, my mother was a strict disciplinarian. She used to whip us with a paint stirrer. 
Yeah. I still can't walk past a Sherman Williams without convulsing. <laughs> but anyway, she grabbed, she said, honey, it's okay. That bitch is out so me and Avon for the last six months. About time somebody uh, brought her down a notch before her head got as big as her hair. <laughs> but anyway, since we've touched on religion, let's, how about some sex? Yeah. yeah. Well, not really. Well, maybe. If y'all are buying enough drinks, you know, I'm a little bisexual. You buy me something, I'll get real sexual. But anyway, dating, is, dating and sex have gotten really weird. A little scary, as a matter of fact. Um, the other day, I was perusing on Craigslist. Don't look at me like that. Y'all have all done it after a couple of beers. But there was a guy on there that just wanted somebody to wear stilettos and stand on his hands. That's a real fetish. Look that shit up. Anybody here into that? I'm asking for a friend. I'm sorry, squirrel, I tried. But anyway, I've never really had any game. I mean, my safe word is stop! Please stop! But anyway, I've often wished that I could be one of those that could just have the game going on like a Jedi master. You know, being able to walk up to somebody in a bar and go, these are not the droids you seek. You do want to perform fellatio. <laughs> you do want to perform cunnilingus. Never quite had that. So I kind of took myself out of the dating game and made it easy on myself. I started dating my stalker. It's a lot easier and a lot less embarrassing than filing a police report. But I'm not real good at relationships in general. I get a little apathetic. How many of you people only half listen to your partner? <laughs> Especially when they're falling, you're trying to fall asleep at night and they keep talking about their day. I eventually just... <laughs> I eventually just start doing, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I woke up, my car and my credit card was gone. <laughs> he came on the next day, I was like, did you take my stuff? Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, I'm Tracy Barkley. Thank you so much. Clap for Miss Tracy Barkley coming up from Nashville. She's a funny lady. Keep an eye on her.